come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie talk show and podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. You can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button. All that helps us become the fastest growing podcast in the universe. Mm. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Michaela. I am Sean. <laughs> Holly. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stop and make that awfully clear this time. For myself. <laughs> I briefly possessed Sean last yeah. week. Sean, yeah. that makes sense. Like, you were fighting your way through. You're like, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> that was a weird one. What was that? Yeah. Sean, I now want to Photoshop that movie, I Am Sam, to just say, I am Sean with your face on it. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, Sean. Well, I'm Colin, and uh, tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Holly. Yes. <laughs> Miss Holly, um, yes. what did you choose tonight? Tonight, we finally brought a, a James Bond movie to the freak show oh, with the 1979 classic Moonraker. Moonraker. <laughs> Is this the only Bond movie that could be brought to the freak show? I mean, no, no. There's, there's a couple more that are pretty out there. Yeah. but A view uh, to a kill. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's definitely a couple out there that are pretty ridiculous, but this one's... This seems one, special. This one is this. Yeah, it's seems a special seems, one. It's a special this, one. Who's this directed by? <laughs> this is directed by Lewis Gilbert. Who is that? Um, you would know him from The Spy Who Loved Me. Oh. Um, and then uh, uh, Alfie from the sixties. Okay, know. the Michael Caine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, that's what he's most famous for. Um, that later got remade with Jude Law. Yes, exactly. That's why I was like the sixties one. Not, yeah, not I was Jude like, Law. Like, guy, because I thought <laughs> when you said that, I was like the Jude Law. Movie? No, 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 <laughs> the original. Michael Kine. Yeah. <laughs> and the spy who loved me <clears throat> was the one that came right before this, right? Yeah. And, okay. And if I'm not mistaken, I remember that the uh, spy who loved me ends with uh, James Bond will return in for your eyes only. Yes. And then they pushed it because of the success of Star Wars. They not, and they needed Bond to go to space. This, so. Okay. So <laughs> this is what I'm wondering because I've yes. never seen Moonraker before, and I asked right. questions before we watched it. I'm like, so well, this is this is a Bond movie, and Colin looked, well went eh, kind of, yeah. But I'm like, James Bond is in it. James Bond's in it. The <laughs> Broccoli's have produced this movie. Yeah. This is a Bond movie. This is a Bond movie, yeah. yeah. What happened? What happened before? <laughs> what happened after? You said well, Bond had to go to space, and watching the, not knowing anything about it, watching it tonight, I'm like, this is because of Star Wars. Yeah. Obviously because of the yes. I think it, it yes. like, took about two years, it feels like, from Star Wars for like that whole space thing to really uh, Catch impact. everybody else? Yeah, because this is the year that uh, Alien came out in 1979, mm-hmm. Moonraker... And uh, Star Trek, the motion picture. Yeah. You know, so everybody, the big studio, big movies. Right. They saw with, this yeah. and the budget. And they're like, well, we've got money. <laughs> we can do that. Yeah. But this actually, I think uh, Moonraker was an Ian Fleming novel. right? Yeah. It was his third novel, I believe. Okay. See, so that and that's back mm-hmm. in like the fifth. Yeah. Casino Rail was the first one that came out in 53. Something okay, like made that? into a movie in like, well, or sorry, the first James Bond movie is like sixty four or something like that, something right? Like that. Okay, Doctor No, not sure. Not maybe sixty four might have mm. been. Gold you got figure, a book but, behind but, you, but, dude. Uh, <laughs> so hold on, I know this. Doctor No was the first one in nineteen sixty two. Yeah, okay, nineteen sixty two. So then he was. So Ian Fleming wrote a bunch of books, but then yeah. I can't remember. He did. So did he die? And then somebody else took over because there's a yeah. bunch more James Bond books. And some of those have been made into movies. Yeah, or- there was a few books that were released before he died um, because he did a lot of short stories, too. Okay. So he did novels and short stories of Bond. Um, of Bond. Okay. Yes. And um, he did some other stuff, too. Like he did um, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Ew. Really? Yeah. Like he did. He did some other movie. things, too. I fucking um, hate that movie. Well, he did the, the book. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but he's responsible for the movie because he wrote the book. True, true. <laughs> this is true. Um, no, it goes back to him. But yeah, he did some of those. And then there was some Bond books that were released uh, posthumously after after he died. And mm-hmm. then, yeah, there was a couple different writers that took over because they're still like cranking out Bond stuff. So yeah. Have we yeah. ever used a uh, story other than Ian Fleming's for a Bond movie? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean for, for, like, that was for... originally written as a book? I don't yeah. think so, right? 
I think like some of the subsequent scripts have been made into books. There are also books that are just James Bond adventures. Well, right. Well, uh, but I don't we, think any anything. I don't think they appear in print and then become a movie. The movie people now are like, no, we're we're saving this for you know our, our feature film. I'm, I'm not entirely. Some of the ones in the '90s might have been based on. And this one was this were, one. There's yeah. two books with the title moonraker because there's the original moonraker but mm-hmm. apparently this one isn't like a close adaptation no so not, no it's not so there's a novelization uh, I'd read that of this book. called james bond moonraker mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah okay. yeah and yeah, the, I, for, I, think, I forgot what the first one what the original was called it's like something and the moonraker or something like that i don't remember yeah and they a lot of like and that was the thing with the like the james bond films a lot of set pieces and moments Mm -hmm. would kind of get shuffled around in the different you know in the different episodes Mm. so that's why you know when you were saying i think while we were watching the movie i think it was sean said uh you know like there's a scene in this that kind of feels like you know like a a bunch of people were assigned to this script and this scene was written by like this team (laughs) you know we're gonna put the the giant snake you know yeah yeah. yeah. it's like it's because those scenes they dream them up for one movie and then it gets replaced and they save the sequence they're like but that's good we're gonna hold no yeah we gotta hold that everybody's got their (laughs) things that they hold on to it's like we can put in this movie yeah. yeah, like when that was mentioned, um, there was actually um, an uncredited writer, uh, Jerry Anderson, was brought in just for the space stuff. Because he, wow. <laughs> because he that's, did. That's what he, this movie feels yeah, like. It's, he did movies like Alien Attack, Invaders from the Deep, Invasion UFO. Yes. So they brought him in just oh, wow. for the yeah. space yeah. stuff. Nice. Yeah. This well, almost this... feels like a highlight reel of like, where do you want your James Bond? Do you want him as a cowboy in Rio? Do you want him fighting a snake? <laughs> Do you want him in space? Well, Here's a highlight reel yeah. of it all. Need, well, it feels yeah. like they, they all they had were those, like, we'll save it for something else because it got taken out of this movie. It feels like somebody cashed in all of those mm-hmm. and said, we need a Bond movie to go to space real quick. What do you got sitting around? It's a scrapbook and movie, yeah. yeah. And they put them together and they're just like, he's in space now. It's two hours. <laughs> yep. Because yeah. their turnaround was usually, I think, about two years, right? They were doing one about every two years. Yeah. And so, yeah, I suppose it's like, well, we gotta, we're, we're going to we're gonna do a space thing because space is a big deal <laughs> for our next one. Yeah. Let's throw something together real quick. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Can you guys imagine a world where the James Bond machine is like the Marvel machine and we get like two James Bond movies a year? How nuts would that be? Yeah, yeah. That would be like... Like, think of how bad they would get. How, how quickly enough. they'd get bad. Well, let's talk about bad with a movie called Moonraker. So, I mean, this was regarded, I think, I'm like... I'm sorry, bad? No. Yeah. Okay, well, in What the, are you talking about? In the James Bond... Okay, so... Uh, well, that's right. We're not saying our opinions yet. You got to hold on for the... Uh, the, the and I, the I do think... I And this is, you know, jumping ahead, but I do think later on we should say who our favorite James Bond is and if we have a favorite James Bond movie. Yeah, because it's like... It's I usually the one you grew up with. So I think we should I was going to say, mine's going to be boring yeah. because, you know, I didn't get an ill James Bond until later in life, but... That's, it's yeah. not boring. I think we should go over that later. Okay. Or then you got to do your favorite James Bond movie by, or, you know, with the era of actor. Like, what's your favorite Sean Connery? Your favorite well, well I haven't seen that. Yeah, we don't have yeah. yeah. Let's keep it simple, Colin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was the, on the book. There you go. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The 50 yeah. years year worth collection of DVDs, of, of oh, Blu-rays, Bond. yes. Um, but well, this well, one, okay. went, it was regarded as the like the bad. One. This is well, the, that's what I was wondering. James like, what is the shark? What is the reputation of James Bond before this movie? How many movies do we have before this one? A shuffling of papers. We have, yes, yeah, sir. Probably at least like, 10, so this right? was 79. He said the earliest ones were in, what, 60? 62. 62. 62. 62? Yeah, about this, every two years. This is number 11. This is 11. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so in 79, we're 11 Bonds in. Or yeah. 11 yeah. Bond movies And this in. is like the fourth with Roger Moore? Fourth? Okay, yes. maybe. The fourth yes, with this Roger is the fourth Moore. with Roger Moore. How many did we do? Live and Let Die. Uh, he, I think he did the most, right? He's he did. Yeah. Roger Moore's been Bond the longest. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, it was yeah. six or seven, right? Yeah. Because it was Live and Let Die... Um, yeah, on her man. No, uh, he's done eight. Love me. Wow, Moonraker. What's the one I'm missing? Then, uh, for your eyes only, View to a Kill was mm-hmm. his last one. He did Octopussy. Octopussy. Yeah. He did that whole. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Um. Well, the but that's the thing. I think like you know they were more serious minded. Like if you watch A Spy Who Loved Me, I mean, there's still like a what do you call it? It's like a, hey, to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there's there's always been humor in the James Bond movies. Mm-hmm. But this one, it seems like, leans into or maybe like what's it doing? It's it's leaning 
so far into it that later, as you guys it's are saying, it's leaning so far up its own ass. <laughs> the, well, there's a there's a scene in this movie where a pigeon does a double take. <laughs> That is really what you, yeah. And that's the end of an insane scene and, that came no, before. No, no, no. Let's wait, wait, wait. A pigeon was made to do a double yeah, take yeah, yeah. in the editing, but that's that's more purpose. Well, what is more purposeful, doing an editing or getting a fucking bird and training it to do a double take? I don't know. Yeah, but yes, a pigeon does a double take in this film. You are correct. It's pretty wild. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they're they're definitely leaning into like the comedy of it. But I was surprised tonight watching it. I'm like, well, you know, I mean, like the first actor you know first mm-hmm. half of the movie does still yeah. feel like like classic james yeah. bond and just especially these... the cold open yeah yeah the cold open is like oh, classic bond well until the end of that chase it gets a real ridiculous but <laughs> the... we're talking about the you're talking about the 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 skydiving scenes. yeah 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 it gets real stupid at the end like it's it feels like classic james bond until the end of that yeah. chase well tell us about it well, yeah. Uh, yeah, what uh, happens yeah because you remind me there, yeah a lot <laughs> so happened much happened movie. i feel like yeah it was we went into 12 movies there's uh james bond's very swanky uh space age private jet which mm-hmm. like the inside of this jet like if every house i ever lived in could look like the inside of this jet i'd love it like yeah. bring back this funky space age like interior design fuck your modern farmhouse shit get it out of here bring back this stuff <laughs> like it's timeless it looks great um I don't remember why this happens, but Jaws is in his private jet. Yeah. And no, wait, wait. Who's, everybody knows who Jaws yeah, is. Yeah, he's I been in multiple movies. Well, he's only, he was in The Spy Who Loved Me, the one mm-hmm. right before this. Gotcha. Ah, and okay. um, they parachute out. There's a fight in the air for a parachute, which, like, if anyone knows about skydiving, can you explain to us how you steer in the air, like, control where you're going? Without the parachute, you mean? You're just no, as your yeah, body Yeah, because they're just, like, they, like, put their arms out, and they can, all like, right. move forward and, like, turn around. How does that... All right, now, all my Sean, knowledge comes from resistance. Passenger 57, so here we go. I was go. like, all right, all right. Sean, <laughs> Sean, explain aerodynamics. That's Let's go. Got. Come on. <laughs> no, I got nothing. I mean, uh, just by the poses, like, you know, when they have all things out, that's supposed to be the slow position, I'm guessing, yeah, but when they do quite, that dive thing and put their a... legs... Yeah, yeah, but they it's not even they're moving down. They're moving, like, like side ways and forward. I think it's just it's tilting of the body but and you, you don't see that happening in the movie they just like they're just casually it's, gliding around I also it's like it's a, but it's like camera. a bird it's, well, yeah. it's the same I premise is like a bird you know they yeah, just they're steer around a little bit plus yeah. the cameraman's also like flying the other direction yeah. yeah it is an impressive sequence though because uh if they stop if they don't show the close-ups of the actor right the yeah. inserts look the bad the inserts look bad the yes. inserts yeah. look bad in a lot of these movies and yes. you know especially yes. in this one because that's where you're going in for like okay it is Roger Moore you know because oh, it's yeah. a stunt double and the right. you know but the stunt doubles are doing this but it's is perfect and he's falling at 80 miles an <laughs> yeah. hour. Yeah. But this is like the stuff that I guess James Bond movies, like this is why you went because they were like the biggest movies that did these crazy stunts where mm-hmm. guys jump out of airplanes without a parachute because we're sitting there watching it. I'm like, I mean, you're watching two guys, ju- you know, jumping out of an airplane. Only one has a parachute. I'm like, how does the second stunt man? Uh, get to the ground because right. <laughs> this is like yeah. Well, that's the cartoon where you're just like, well, we didn't think about that, did we? Yeah. It it yeah. There's a fight for a parachute. Bond gets the parachute. Jaws doesn't, and this is where it starts. Like your first clue, this movie is yeah. not going to be like the rest. He starts flapping his arms like a bird <laughs> and lands on a fucking circus tent. What's your yeah. point? That's our cold open. <laughs> <laughs> and survives. Because he's Jaws. Yeah. Yeah. Jaws is yeah. this character obviously named after the fact that Jaws, the movie, came out. So they yeah. gave him like He's these... got big metal chompers. Yeah, yeah. he's played by Richard Keel. Richard yes. Keel has uh, some kind of a growth hormone uh, irregularity mm-hmm. that made him... Uh, like, I mean, because you were saying... 7'2". Like, yeah, he looks like Sean, the Hulk. Sean has a great uh, explanation of what he looks like with Michael Sheen. Shannon. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There was just a certain moment in this where I'm like, he looks like Michael Shannon. No, he looks like if Michael Shannon was Bruce Banner and he was and this guy is the Hulk, like Michael Shannon <laughs> would transform into yeah, Jaws. Into yeah. this guy. And he would, that would he's be the Hulk version of him. Yeah. He's huge. He's mm-hmm. big. He's got a big metal grill because he's got steel teeth, which means he can chomp through like steel Anything. cables. Yeah. Yeah. Super strong and apparently super dense. He may have balls of steel, we find out later. Mm-hmm. He might. <laughs> I've always wanted to see this movie that Richard <laughs> Okay, don't follow up. He may have balls I, of steel. I've always, I've always wanted, wanted to see. <laughs> like, where are, are you going with this guy? Where are we going? I was going somewhere. <laughs> Richard Keel was in a movie. I think might have been his first one. Did you look this up? Mm-mm. It's a title uh, the title is Ega. 
<laughs> with an exclamation mark, and he plays a caveman. Bring us the man. Oh, I think my is, God. is brought into the yeah, E E G A H exclamation mark. Ega. It's a shame we never got a movie with him fighting Robert Zadar. Those yeah. two going oh. at it would be wonderful. Oh, but just, but how just did Cannon heads. not get on that? <laughs> just their know? heads fighting. I don't know how we pulled that off, but that's all I want to see. <laughs> you but feel the, like Cannon would have scooped up people like that and made them fight each other, right? You know? yeah, right. Like we have, it's think. our universal monster. Yeah. It seems like he was in stuff for, I mean, a very long period of time. He would show up. He was like a voice actor, too, wasn't he? At some point, in cartoons or something mm-hmm. like that. Happy Gilmore. Don't you guys ever wish that's you had right. I was going to say, I know. Hey, I, yeah, uh, I know him for Happy Gilmore. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I knew him as a Bond villain. But yeah. I grew up with Happy Gilmore. Yeah, there you Don't go. Don't you guys ever wish you had a physical deformity you could exploit into being famous and rich like that? Like, Sometimes, so, like, <laughs> like, wow, he lives a better right, life than we, we ever will. Where, where like, it doesn't affect you in n- normal living day to day, but it's something you can use to your right. Advantage. Yeah, it's yeah. like you can be a character actor based on that one thing about you for your whole life. Right. Yeah, so that's fucking Javier amazing. Javier Baudet or Baudet or whatever the guy yeah. who plays all the spindly monsters oh, yeah. every yeah. single day. Yeah, the Bye Bye Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. If you want yep. a thing real thin tall guy yeah. mm-hmm. it's him uh-huh um yeah a jaws well he was in spy who loved me but there right. he was more of like a sinister he was yes. more Henchman. fearsome yes serious mm-hmm. you know and so this one like totally blows up his character and makes it's him so stupid <laughs> do, do you think <laughs> this is all it is expensive because the they had they needed to, they wanted to rush into getting bond in space so like let's bring back all the people from the other one just so we can give it legitimacy of being a bond film if we just bring back all these characters but we're also going to send them to space i mean he's like an iconic villain too so i can see why you'd want to yeah. bring him well, back sure. like I especially think... for this franchise like well, he's that's the what I'm one wondering. i didn't know he of. showed up yeah. in multiple movies yeah. first of all yeah, yeah. Okay. he made a big impression with the mm-hmm. last one and so but then i think uh somebody Did he have said... a girlfriend <laughs> in the last one no um lewis gilbert started paying attention to fan mail and oh, a little God. boy wrote in and said why does he have to be his arch nemesis why can't he be he be lovable <laughs> oh so they yeah. gave him a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and he switches teams at the end yep. and becomes oh, a wow. helper to Bond. Because wow. <laughs> the kids demanded that. it. Yeah. <laughs> a, tiny, a tiny German girlfriend named Ingrid, I'm guessing. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just seemed like a big deal and whatnot. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, like, where did that, I don't know. You're right. She should have had braces or something. She did. I she thought did. for sure so she was going it to. It would only make sense. Yeah. yeah, so when they originally shot it, that scene where they first meet and they smile at each other for the first time she's wearing braces mm-hmm. but they didn't and then when they filmed, young. when they filmed it in space she didn't have braces and they caught it at later on oh, they're like shit. well we gotta edit one of them either give her braces or take her yeah. braces so that's what happened it would have really? been <laughs> Silly me, I would have thought that they didn't want the braces because she would seem too childlike to be in a relationship right, with yeah, the giant yeah. and the glasses. Silly me, this yeah. is 1979, yeah. and there's that cocaine matter. everywhere. Yeah. That okay. doesn't matter, Sean. It's too bad they didn't go a step further and not only give her braces, but give her like headgear too. So that that like, would have been because you know, yeah. then that's like their it's the Frankensteining of right? like this is their like deformities bringing them together. Right? You know? Yeah, I love yeah. it. I wish they had kept her braces. <laughs> yeah, like the really obnoxious headgear where you like can't even turn your head or something like that. You Which know, like, I don't want understand how they forgot to give her braces the second time yeah like, right, it's, yeah. it's yeah. literally like, the only joke it's the only reason she's there like really? if i was like, if i was that actress i'd be like where joke. are my braces right like, yeah. yeah that's what yeah. you're yeah. figuring yeah. It's, yeah. it's the joke it's the reason yeah. i exist yeah. <laughs> right where are my braces <laughs> that poor actress she probably got paid dog shit because she doesn't have any fucking lines in this movie that's true yeah so there's a lot of true. uh like i guess visual storytelling in this movie mm-hmm. i was keenly aware of this time where scenes are shot especially all the stuff with Jaws, who never says anything. Well, he does have a line at, at the end of this movie. Yeah. Um, his only line. His only in, line. In the, in the Bond movies. But the, it's all basically like a, a reaction, action and reaction shots, like back and forth, like re- in a way that feels very stagey now when you watch yeah. it. It's like, right. I don't know how well that translates. It's like, but it's easy for an international audience to comprehend what's happening in True. this movie, right? <laughs> True. Um, so the uh, who's our um, villain in the Moonraker? Drax. Hugo Drax. Yes. Yeah. What's his? Uh, well, that's uh, Michael Lonsdale that's is right. the actor mm-hmm. who. Um, I don't. Is he French? Is that where he hails from? I had seen him. He was in Name <laughs> of the Rose with Sean Connery. So he was in with a Bond mm-hmm. in Name of the Rose, uh, and he was in uh, Ronin, the movie with mm-hmm. Robert De Niro. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen him, I don't think, in anything else, he's, but I know he has a, a long career. He, uh, yeah. I feel like he should have been in a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, he's been yeah. in a few things, but um, yeah, I'm not sure his... Many things, I think. Yeah, he, I think no, he's been in like a lot, French yeah. French movies or whatever, uh, but... Okay, so what's uh, what's Hugo Drax up to? What's his uh, nefarious plan? Because all these uh, egomaniacal Bond right. villains eventually want to take over the world or do something. Right, world domination, yeah. Colin. Yeah. Every single one of them, almost. I mean, at least this guy <laughs> weird, right? This guy takes it to like universe domination. Yeah, this is so. like supremacy shit. Like yeah. this is like we want to create a better race shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, we've yeah. chosen the specific people. Yeah. Although I do appreciate that, yeah. I do appreciate that there was diversity in his pure specimens. That's true. I'll give him that. But yep. still good at- <laughs> wow! Uh, wow! <laughs> I'll give him I, that. I, wow! I appreciate this is great. <laughs> you know, I appreciate the thoughts behind Hitler, just not yeah, the way yeah, he yeah, went yeah, about yeah. it. No, yeah. she's saying this guy's one step better than Hitler yeah. because no, no, at know, least because he wasn't just one race. Right. And yeah. One, yeah. Right. It wasn't. It, yeah. People yeah. It wasn't about. People. It wasn't yes. about a race. It was just they all need like, to be beautiful. Right. Yeah. So uh, I at least appreciate that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Well, who is he and what is his plan? How, like, so, how's he, yeah, how's right. he going to do it? Yeah. So um, it's a very complex plan. He's an old timey English hunting gentleman, apparently. Yes. <laughs> yes. Who's got a that runs a cult? Who's got a beautiful state of you know cult followers? Cult followers that he's training to send to space. Um, Noah's Ark style, you know, two by two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to release a gas. Into the uh, like from space. Once we're in space, they're going to release a gas under the earth and kill all mankind. And then repopulate. And repopulate. Yeah. With and of course, that means people. that he has yeah. a space station naturally way up there. Huh. Um, I was always curious, like how he actually got the space station put together. These are questions I don't know if you can sure. ask of these types of right. movies. Because like, I wouldn't. Was he sending like rockets up there all the time? To I mean, did you see the speedboat gondola? <laughs> <laughs> did, did you see that the the, the coffin gondola boat? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. With an assassin hiding in it, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this movie's so full of stuff. I don't even know if we're gonna be able it's to. Surpri- it I all. feel like I'm already forgetting because so much happened. That okay. I don't, my yeah, brain only has so much we're, room. We're not gonna be able to like even tell you the best stuff because yeah. it is left. I know. Our going minds. into this, I was like, I don't even know how we're gonna jump into this. Like, do we talk about Ian Fleming? Do we talk about James Bond? Do we talk about Moonraker? We're not gonna have time, Colin. Yeah, we're not gonna have time. We're, gonna have time. we're gonna yeah. just talk <laughs> Moonraker because there was so much. <laughs> All right, so uh, our hero, James Bond, has to go. Well, the, he's tipped off to right. it because... So Moonraker is the name of the space shuttle that has been created by this Drax. Is it Drax Industries? Yeah. Or? I finally know. Is yeah. this, I never knew Never knew what the Moonraker was. I've heard that they name. They say it like so a million many, yeah. times. No, no, no. I know. <laughs> I found out watching the movie. Gotcha. Oh, okay. I've heard uh, Moonraker yeah. forever. That's never what, knew what oh, it was. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I was watching this, I'm like, when did the... Because the Columbia was the first space shuttle, right? Didn't that go up in 80? Is the does this movie predate the launch of America's space shuttle program? I mean, because that design is the, that's the space shuttle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, the the uh. the original space shuttle was supposed to launch earlier than it did. So this movie was kind of supposed to coincide with like the, the actual launch, and then it got pushed. Oh, okay. so this this movie actually does come out before yeah. the space launch. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, it's in the credits. They yeah. worked with everybody on mm-hmm. this movie. Yeah. So I'm sure NASA's like, oh, this would be the greatest way to like introduce our new ship to everyone. Yeah. Like, we'll get it in the James Bond movie. Yeah, it was supposed to be released closer to the launch than it actually was. Yeah. Yeah. When America made, like, these crazy ships to go to space. Space shuttles! Oh, God, it was an awesome time. Uh, so... <laughs> And the Star Wars de- missile defense system, or whatever. <laughs> I mean, like, what the hell? So, uh, so anyway, the, one of these is stolen in our pre pre right. credit sequence, right? Um, by uh, who we, we later find out it's Drax, like re stealing his own ship, yes, right? Uh, while in space and blowing up, or no, sorry, it was being transported to England or something, yeah, they're because they're gonna use it for a mission. So, Drax was supplying, well, supplying what's supposed to be like for a normal, like. I don't know, normal mission. Yeah, yeah whatever normal happened. mission, yeah. whatever they yeah, were doing. Space missions. And but he's got alternate plans. He's gonna hijack it, his own invention. Yeah, because he needs it back. For world one domination of his didn't work right. right or whatever. He's got yeah. a launch date. Notice the flaw. So Bond is uh, set. Well, we get the uh, the obligatory James Bond opening credit sequence. That was the song. This time is uh, Shirley Bassey, mm-hmm. right? She's and done a few. She's right? done three. Yeah, yeah, which is this... the most I think anyone's ever done. 
This song was uh, like I. It's for, not as iconic. No, to me. no. For a movie about James Bond going to space, they should have gone a little harder on the theme song. I agree. And the title sequence <laughs> should have been more insane. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, you're already have. doing something insane. Yeah, why was Go the title sequence of this woman on women on trampoline and not like and space underwater stuff? and not space stuff? Yeah. yeah, that's like every James Bond movie. Women yeah, on trampolines. But like it could. But like <laughs> this, but stick a helmet on him. With yeah. The, even oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The stupid Martian lasers, thing. Like I was gonna say, some lasers the go right, and, and then they yeah. split. And or like, oh, sexy alien ladies, you know, Something like right? sexy yeah. space ladies. Why? Like it's right there. Like I mean, I know we're spoiled on like that. The Skyfall one is like actually tells this amazing story and is not just. Like, like, there's a lot to this guy. Fall one, advanced over yeah, the years. yeah. And, and, and I understand mini movie, that. Yeah. But like, yeah, like, there's so much iconic space imagery they could have tapped into, and they didn't mm-hmm. at You're all. The '70s, yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Get with it, man. Yeah. I mean, there are better ones. This is like, but I just Morris Binders, the guy who designed, I think, all of them through. Uh, he was asleep at the fucking wheel on this one, dude. He was. Yeah, because yeah. you're 11 movies in. Yeah. You know, I mean, you've done he's it 11 got, times. He's like, I got naked an idea. woman, <laughs> naked lady. <laughs> trampolines. <laughs> We've done that for the last five movies, and it's always worked. Yeah. But it feels it like again. a lot of the time it it's broke. only one lady. <laughs> a lot of this one feels like it's just the same lady, one lady jumping up and down, and I'm like, all right, right. I need a little more. It's just like, his wife. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. yeah. Just get the models in. The Rob Zombie of his day just casting his wife and everything. Yeah, that. exactly. I was going to say that. I remember the what was the Beauty to Kill one that they were all on skis and they had like these that's something like fluorescent, that's better uh, yeah, that's it was something I, like, but he come there yeah he it's, gets there this I, is I'll, not a great but, title no scene. it's not <laughs> and I'll be I'll, I'll be honest when I see this I get mad because I'm like I could do one so much fucking better and like no one will hire me to do it so that's why I get I take it real personally when I see a bad one because I'm, like, I'm like some Make asshole one. got paid so much just to phone it in like that's how I feel when I look Michaela, at Michaela I want you to create your own Moonraker opening sequence. Yeah. I, I want to see it. Please. I want right, to see I, it. I, I could totally do that. Okay, do you remember? No, you don't remember. Uh, no. Alice Cooper at one point made his own uh, James Bond theme song Did for uh, the man with the golden gun, hoping that it would get. Like, I be appreciate able to, that. So you could hear I like his. That, yeah. Even Alice Cooper is just like, I yeah, gotta, I got to do James this. James Bond was the try. shit. It's yeah. like, yeah, you wanted to get it. Done. You know, what? I appreciate <laughs> artists that are, will put themselves out there to be like, I just want to do this because I want to do it. Right. I always will respect someone who like. T- takes a shot like that you yeah. know yeah. and like but it's also really sad when you see someone take a shot like that that is famous and has a lot of clout and they still don't take it it's like wow who the fuck do you think you are to turn down someone like alice cooper you know yeah yeah can you find that out there anywhere uh i've got it's on his like uh the life and crimes of alice cooper. is it good i mean it sounds like a james bond theme so it sounds I like mean, that's you know, good paul mccartney in the wings did live and let die right yeah, so yeah, I think yeah. that was like okay we can get rock in here a right. little bit. yeah and which i do I like it's gotta be better right. than that sam smith one right For anything's Spectre. better fuck than that. that sam smith one yeah. that one's real bad <laughs> one of the that worst bad. james bond theme songs that's yeah. bad of all time yeah. shirley bassey also did goldfinger and what was the other one i'm like totally Ooh. blanking on it i know yeah um, that's, yeah, that's an iconic one that's what I was singing instead of. Uh, <laughs> what did she do? I don't kill <laughs> Diamonds are forever. Diamonds are forever. No, yeah, no. okay, I got you. Um, <laughs> I right, just everybody see like diamonds raining down on that one. Yeah. <laughs> she also did uh, the song for Thunderball. But that was the the guy who sounded like Tom Jones. Was it Tom Jones? <laughs> I mentioned these are there's a song in there, but it's not the Thunderball. Yeah, I love my Thunderball. <laughs> I don't think it's Tom Jones. But That's it the only thing like, I yeah. can ever hear Tom Jones. <laughs> yeah, it is. Like, yeah. Okay, so or, or what's new pussy Yeah, yeah that too. what's new Thunderball? Thunderball yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> What's new the yeah. ball? There it is. Yeah, see, that's good. Mm. Yeah, you got to get those collections all the James Bond see, theme songs. Sony, hire us. We can take on yeah, the James Bond right. franchise. Look at the direction we can take your yeah, franchise. Yeah. We can do this. Um. So okay. So how does Bond? Uh, I mean, where do you go when you're investigating this kind of stuff? How do you? Uh, where Where does he start? What are the clues? Oh yeah, he's got to find clues. This oh, really but, is this movie, like him just finding clues. That's until all of them. I mean, it's very true. He stumbles into so much but stuff. It, yeah, it's also them. It's a way for them to be jet setting and mm-hmm. going to different countries yeah. and all that stuff. Exotic locales. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's good locales in this movie. There are. Yeah, he's every great. Every one. one of them. Yeah. But that's the thing. They start to blend together. You don't want to watch a too many James Bond movies together because mm-hmm. then you really can't tell which really one did what. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'll remember which one this is. <laughs> well, you, you think that, but I if you watch, because the I thought. 
thought watching this, I thought that this was the one because I knew that they steal the Moonraker. And right. I'm like, I remember a James Bond movie where like in orbit, a uh, shuttle or something spaceship is swallowed up by another spaceship. The, the front opens and like swallows the <laughs> mm-hmm. thing. And I'm like, isn't that? And then it didn't happen. And I'm like, what the? F-? And it, that's, uh, yeah, you only live twice. They yeah. Right. <laughs> so I'm right. Like, oh, you know, I'm getting well, confused. Well, and like, Colin, like, to your point, too, like, I was, I remember the, the, the jaw stuff in this movie a lot, like the him biting the cable and the cold open and all that stuff. I had no idea that was the space movie. Like, oh, I right, was just yeah. like, I remember a weird Jaws movie, you know? Yeah. And I was like, because you think the space movie would be more in space, but it, it's in Rio. It's in Venice. It's yeah. everywhere but space right. until the end. Yeah. Mm, yeah. It only yeah, it ends up there. Um Yeah. Little did I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted Shot the moon. Like, oh, when are we going to the moon? No yeah, moon bases. 50, we're like, we're uh, an hour and ten minutes in the movie, and then we got James Bond on fucking horses in the Wild Wild West. Where's the moon? <laughs> Sean lost it when we got to Rio. Sean couldn't handle another location no. that was not space. Moonraker. Yeah, but I mean, Break yeah, the moon, he's God in uh, the the. Well, I mean, uh, the ponch. He looks like Clint Eastwood he does. at one point. We're no, like, he looks like Marty fuck? McFly trying to be Clint Eastwood. Yeah, yes, he they're does. playing the Magnificent <laughs> Seven theme. Yes. Yes. that movie just oh, yeah. going like over the top. And yeah. <laughs> there are so many musical cues that there's like just. The uh, Spake Zarathustra from 2001. Yes. They use yeah. they use the uh, the there's, keypad is the song the sound yeah. from Close Encounters. Yeah, of the third there are yeah. musical cues and yet there's no music, mm-hmm. no yeah. music, <laughs> or at least n- talk about Sleep at the Wheel. The score, whoever oversaw the score, well, it's John was Barry. He's done them all. Sleeping. Yeah, but there, there's see. I know I, while we were watching the movie, I'm listening. To them going like, wow, there's like no music in these action sequences. It's dead but silent. It eventually does. It kick gets in. in there, but it also like in the build up, it's just kind of. Mm-hmm. It's just ambient sound yeah, or yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. In the, yeah. 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 As they're fighting. And I've noticed, you know, like, uh, cause I think in the, uh, the Christopher Nolan, who is like, I mean, you, when you watch James Bond, He's just movies, making Bond movies, you're now. like, I yeah. see your inspiration. Because they won't let him. If they would just let him make a Bond movie, he'll stop making other Bond movies. Oh, uh, he made, yeah, because his tenant was basically his but James he's Bond. He's been movie. wanting to make a Bond movie for like 20 years and they won't mm-hmm. let him. So he keeps making like off brand Bond movies. Yeah. Just let him fucking make one so he can get it out of his system and move on. But right? I think he's probably going to end up making better movies. Yeah, then if he ever gets to make yeah. the Bond movie, yeah. mm-hmm. but we'll see. But it, they have that same kind of. Spectre? I mean, possibly. Yeah, because like that. Honestly, that movie made me question if Sam Mendes was a good director or not. Yeah, like, is he? It, yeah, Coming I was like, made, of, me, uh, made me question it too. Yeah. I was like, yeah. wait, I've always liked him. Mm-hmm. Right? But maybe, did I? Did I? Wait, did I? Did I? I do. It turns out that it is a combination of the <laughs> yeah. screenwriter and the cinematographer. Yeah. On oh, yeah. They play a big yeah. part of it. Yeah. Because For I bet sure. if you attach Nolan, you can get Deacons. Yeah, probably. So yeah. I bet Again. it would be a better movie. God, I want that movie. Yeah. I'm surprised they couldn't get Deacons for for Spectre after he did uh, Skyfall. Skyfall. I think, yeah. he's, like I think the... he's choosier now, you know? I think he's like, I'm getting up there. I'm going to be pickier about what I do, else, you know? Probably. But, but that 1917 or whatever, probably. Mm. No, I'm going to be shooting Dune for the next five years. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, they <laughs> movie get, that will uh, never come out. I guess the first thing, the leg of the investigation is he goes to Drax's place. The sh- this big it's like palatial, a chateau. Yeah. Yeah. And he meets um, this woman whose name I can't remember, the French lady, who is, uh, we saw her before, Corrine Curry, I think is her name, in your mm. The Hunter from the Future. Ah, uh, yes. That's right. She was also in a movie called The Devil's Honey by Lucio Fulci that you might want to check out. Okay, so anyway. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> the uh, <clears throat> And from here, he also meets the other uh, lead of the movie, which is who? Holly. Holly Goodhead. <laughs> <laughs> because it's yes. not a James Bond movie <laughs> unless you have double entendre all over the place. This all is over. one of the more tame ones, though. <laughs> it like, is. This is a pretty it, PG version. It of and it a does sound movie. better coming out of a British accent. Yeah, it does. It, does. Yeah. it really does. Because we say it, we're like... Good head. I yeah, say it with shame. Oh, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They always say it with a smile. That's weird. But it's way better than Pussy Galore or Christmas oh, Jones. You for know, sure. Like, way for better. Sure. I, I still like. How did they get away with like Pussy Galore and yeah. Octopussy? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know how they got. Just, it. Well, yeah. and like the Christmas one is so bad because it's just a setup for the Christmas only comes once a year. Oh, but that was so great. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> but they wrote the whole movie around yeah. that. Yeah. Like, well, we're getting yeah. whole movies about braces, kind yeah. of. <laughs> So uh, that's something Bond does, I guess. Yeah. And, 
I mean, we do get a re-entry joke. <laughs> Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I think he's attempting re-entry. Uh, I will say, you. as a young oh. child that had a PS2 and played uh, Nightfire a lot, it was very awkward when your options for female characters were Pussy Galore and Christmas Jones and like one <laughs> other one, and it was like, oh, cool, so I get to play as these options. <laughs> Mom, the, should it, I be Pussy? <laughs> yeah. Whereas it's okay because it's a James Bond thing. <laughs> Whereas the dudes get to be like James Bond or Odd Job, and if you were Odd Job, you could fuck everybody up with the hat, you know, like. Like they have Dad's way better options. Like, yeah. What are you? What are you playing? Yeah. yeah. What is this? This movie has its own odd job because uh, see, that's the thing. Oh, like boy. the the James Bond movies have like a formula that's like set in fucking stone, and yeah, the only fun yeah. really, uh, as you know, eleven movies into it, goes and watching how they restructure scenes. Like when does the Q lab scene happen? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now they got to at some point. I can't remember what the first one was, but this one does it where Q and uh, it's not M, but the you know. The replacement for M, they end mm-hmm. up actually going into the field and meet, meeting Bond somewhere in the middle of the movie. Mm-hmm. So instead of getting those scenes front loaded, you get uh, them like in mm-hmm. the middle. I like this one's at like a fucking monastery mm-hmm. where they train ninja monks. Uh huh. Yeah. Because that's what you do because it's James Bond. Oh, yeah. And he gets all his gadgets. We get to see all the crazy gadgets. No um, one can ever one up you if everyone in your life is has like three purposes, right? If everyone's trained for like three things. You got everything true. covered. So. That's true. Um, so anyway, he's put through the ringer because uh, 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 the the odd job character, whose name is an odd job. I'm sorry, I can't remember who it is, but he's like a Japanese fencing. Does he uh, have a name? I'm sure he does because I think Drax referred to him at some point. So did, he had to replace he? him with uh, a new person that would be uh, Jaws at some point. Oh, that's true. But um, he gets uh, one of the first things that Bond has to go through is the zero gravity or the 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 g-force machine yeah <laughs> his name is chang oh, okay simple well, yikes wow <laughs> i they, said that was shame as well <laughs> they made zero effort on that but okay. yeah pretty much yeah he's dispatched later on in a kung fu karate scene where he's fighting James it costs Bond millions a, of dollars yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was the one in the glass factory, right? Where they're smashing everything. Well, that was, like, right. No, the museum. Well, no, there was a museum. No, the museum, museum slash yeah. attic slash clock tower. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. what that was. The museum, yeah, with the weird old, like, old-timey clock tower on top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah in yeah. Venice when they get there. Because mm-hmm. Venice is where they're making these vials, Bond discovers, uh, filled with a substance, mm-hmm. which is we eventually determine is the nerve gas. Right. Uh, but they're making them the, these glass containers of this glass right. factory that Drax owns. Mm-hmm. And when Bond is in Venice, he gets on a gondola. That's right. By himself, which like <laughs> which I, I enjoy. Which like, I, but like movies tell me gondolas are like a romantic thing. And you're supposed to get on it with someone to make out with. Like that's that's like what movies true. tell I tell mean, me. True. Gondolas are Self love. Right. But if I were gonna go to Venice right if now, if you started jerking it, I would respect that. <laughs> I mean, you just pass the dude a twenty and be like, give yeah. me a minute. Yeah. I mean, um, but if I were to go to Venice right now, I'd be going by myself, and I would totally read a gondola. I know, I know, oh, I know. Yeah. I'm just saying this is what <laughs> movies tell me they're for. True. Movies tell me they're for making out on. and true. for. Like, uh, uh, Comically uh, sinking boats. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. So that's the only yeah. thing they're for. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. That's and it. I so, totally appreciate that he's just like sitting there with his legs crossed, looking around like all smug. Like I'm really enjoying life right now. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was like, it. I wish I could access that level of like zen. You know? Right. Like, yeah. Um, you and, gotta be if you're Bond. You can zen. <laughs> I know. It's true. And, a, and another gondola comes by, which like I never think about the fact that they have to pass each other. Like that's never a thought in my mind. Right. Gondolas right. is that they pass in opposite God forbid, directions. There's two feuding gondolas that pass <laughs> yeah. each other. There's turf wars. And they're yeah. Just smacking oars at each yeah. other as they pass by. Like, What's that about? Do you think they have turf wars? In oh, Venice, definitely. like gondola oh, yeah. tour like yeah. cab drivers. Yeah. Right? They're like, I'm going to get that fare, yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, except it's like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and whatever the gondola ver- version of Uber is, is moving in on their turf yeah. now. Yeah. Ooh, is there Uber for gondolas? <laughs> Yeah, it's except those are, the ones, those are the ones. In that Venice, there probably is. Yeah, gondolas, but they put motors on it. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody in Italy knew they could do until Uber yeah. showed up. I like to imagine that all the gondola, like, I don't want to say drivers. I don't know what it is. Operators are, like, super jacked because they spend all day just, like, growing. So, like, their arms yeah. are huge. But, and then I literally said, this looks like a funeral boat. <laughs> and sure yeah. enough. It's a funeral it was, gondola. It had, it had yeah. little like uh, what you call it, uh, cherubs and shit, like on the side and of it, black. and wreaths and black, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, with all yeah, these ornate yeah. like flower arrangements mm-hmm. and a very ornate like traditional oh, yeah. coffin. And mm-hmm. then we see the coffin, and immediately after, you, as soon as you see the coffin, 
you know there's going to be an assassin inside. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. This is a Bond movie, and that's just not going to show up for no reason. So we get a knife-throwing assassin. Why can't he just have a gun? They bank on timing so much. They really do. Like, like they're how really... long was he in there? <laughs> like, that's his third how trip up and down. Like... Right? Laying in that coffin. Knife, he goes, <gasps> and then throws the How did he know? How did he know Radio, in yeah, that coffin radios. that... Well, yeah. there was there was someone driving it. There yeah, was, so that yeah. person gave him a signal and Because it, it, yeah. it wasn't actually a gondola. It was a boat. It was yeah. like, a, like a, a motorized boat. Right. It and there was like someone a, driving it. It looked like yeah. it was about to have a Viking funeral. Yeah, oh, like, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, yeah. yeah. Like, what, what, yeah. Just get a sniper. Yeah. And put right, up there yeah. and do, what? Why? Go this is so elaborate. Because it's Venice and it's Moonraker, Sean. <laughs> it's, I've, it, I gotta imagine it's like tradition. Like if the big boss comes to, we already did the sniper scene in at the chateau with the hunting party. We already did that. Did we, we, we gotta did. go with the he next did. step. Got, the right, next you're step right. is you're right. This, funeral boat. You're right. This, this movie makes sense in the process. It makes to get to the end. sense. You're right. <laughs> but, I'm sorry. I agree with Sean though that if you're going to like put this much planning into like we got a bank that we're gonna be on the same river as him at the same time going opposite direction then you need to have a gun if you're gonna put I, I, that yeah you can't if just... you're really gonna rely on the timing that much knives are not gonna do and the optimistic he was because he had like six knives in there yeah. so he's like i'm gonna get multiple chances at this yeah. but bond has like a q enabled boat like his boat is not yeah. just a normal gondola it turns into a speed boat speed yeah. gondola a speed gondola and it has uh i can't remember what special features they had before it, it has, was like it has mines no, no, no. That's that was a different boat. boat. In that's the a different Amazon. Boat. That's the second my boat. Bad. Yes. My bad. That's, that's, the, that's the other boat. And the American torpedo Peter. that yes. one had. Yeah. yeah, that's the other boat. This one eventually like has uh, it becomes a hovercraft, uh, and then right. he ends up <laughs> driving it through the streets of Venice, <laughs> where he gets the double take from the pigeon, and hilarity oh, ensues no. as he drives this thing around. Um, yeah, it was uh, the. Uh, and then it goes on land. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it yeah. turns into a parade float, yeah, basically. Float. <laughs> yeah. Um, the 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 first so the the Korean uh, Curry character she mm-hmm. ended up meeting her demise she at did. the uh, the hands of Drax's dogs. He's got these yeah. super trained. Uh, what are they? Mastiffs? Uh, you no, know, those are like they Doberman. were Dobermans. Dobermans. Yeah. Dobermans. Yeah. Like Dobermans. Yeah. Scary Dobermans that he can toss raw meat in front of him. And they won't do anything until he snaps his fingers. And because yeah. you always have to have your villain has like some. I would of... dream of having a dog that well trained. My yeah. God, that'd be wonderful. Like Brandy, you could train Harley to do that. <laughs> I, I really doubt it. That chubby I really little, doubt it. Chubby little loaf. He, he does not respect me enough to listen. To, maybe maybe my husband he could do that well, with, see, but really not me. That kind of that. Yeah, that yeah. Train. You'd like you could teach him like. Uh, um, uh, stand by me, like sick balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I'm really grossed out by his like tin, like like I don't know what kind of container. It's like that an is. urn of it's raw like meat. An urn, yes, an urn is a great description. Yeah. It's just raw meat that just sits out on a table. It's fucking disgusting. That's disgusting. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna but kill your dogs with that, dude. Love it. Well, I'm sure it was just brought there right before that scene. Oh yeah, uh, freshly. But slotted. it was full, and he took two pieces it was full. out. Steaks like, for later. Yeah. yeah. What happens to the rest of that? The other dogs get it. Who knows? He's rich. Maybe he there's like an stuff. ice pack in the bottom. It's like an ice bucket, like a fancy yeah. ice bucket. Yeah. With Maybe. Meat sitting on yeah. top. Maybe. I like that we're getting into this. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like a fancy cooler. It's a fancy yeah. cooler. The rich right? live a different life than us, Colin. We, do. we like, yeah, we like utility, especially the crazy ones who want to kill every, everybody who lives on Earth and repopulate species. Right. Um, so uh, Bond does reconnect with uh, Doctor Goodhead in. Uh, Venice, because she's also right. uh, checking stuff. So she works for Drax as like a chemist or something. Right. But it's later discovered. <gasps> surprise. In a very, uh, it was a fun scene. He's like standard equipment for the CIA where he's going through all of her, her little, her version of uh, uh, her gadgets and everything. Yeah. She's yeah. got like perfume that sprays fire and <laughs> something else's yeah, ass. Like her and- pen is like a, a syringe. Yeah. 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 I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. see the point. Oh, there, it oh, there it is. There it is. Roger Moore, king of that. I've seen him in a couple other movies with like Michael Caine and everything. Like, it's bad comedy, but it's funny. Like, okay, some so, of the stuff I mean, he does. I guess that at some point we hear we should talk about like Roger Moore as James Bond and like what the hell? Because we were sitting there watching this because you know you're saying he's unflappable. This is part of I guess the appeal of Bond, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. is that this guy can go to space and come back to Earth and be fine. <laughs> he can mm-hmm. he wrestle snakes and almost drown. Yeah. yeah. Um. So is James Bond a sociopath? True or, fa- true or false? Oh we, oh, we determined watching the movie for sure. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because we were talking about like 
like if you can't go by past a casket without assuming someone's going to kill you, then like you're basically on edge 24 seven. And we were saying that us as normal people, like we would die because like the anxiety would right. literally kill us. We like wouldn't sleep. Yeah. We would, like wouldn't be yeah. able to live. Yeah. Right. But he is, does not experience that unflinching. So yeah. he's definitely like a sociopath. Yeah. So he's mentally ill in a different way than we are. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, think but, he, I think he wants to love, yeah. but he doesn't have the capacity to right. do it. And she's like, hmm. Yeah. Well, that could explain why he's such a womanizer, too. You exactly. Know I mean? right. <laughs> exactly. That's why we were saying, like, most of the time a sociopath, like, those are all really bad qualities, but he uses his superpowers for good. Yeah. Mm, we yeah. said, like we said, we were watching this. He is like the first version of Dexter. He is proto Dexter. Exactly. He's a sociopath using those sociopath qualities for good. But will he ever be happy? <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, wonder. he doesn't seem unhappy. I mean, well, I, you know? I feel like we explore that more in Skyfall. Yeah. Well, and yeah. and uh, um, well, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, which is the one where James yeah. Bond gets married. He oh, yeah, yeah, he wants yeah, yeah. To oh quit. my God, yeah, yeah I forgot yeah. about that. So yeah. they did do this before. So this is technically after that. So like, there was a kind of a shift in his character after the events of that movie, mm-hmm. where they really never. I think maybe View to a Kill like taps on that again that he was married like he goes to her grave you know hmm. and it's like oh tracy bond you know like <laughs> i don't tracy. remember that that sounds so wrong tracy bond, tracy yeah. bond. Uh, my late wife tracy yeah. no uh-huh. what, <laughs> what? Would she in- wait would she introduce herself the same way yeah Bond, Tracy, hey, Tracy Bond. Bond, Tracy yeah, Bond. Yeah, I don't know. She never gets a chance, unfortunately. Well, that uh, would feel like I feel like she gets interrupted every time by him. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's how he wouldn't never let her get it out. And he's like, oh, James. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, James and Mrs. Like, Bond. She goes, she goes, <laughs> she goes Bond, and she's gonna do it, but then he jumps in with yeah. the. She goes, she says Bond, and he goes James Bond. Yeah, yeah. always yeah. interrupts her <laughs> yes. at, at all the swanky hotels yes. in Monte Carlo and everywhere. Yes. Where they yes. have Every play. gathering, and they always have an argument about it afterwards, and he never remembers. He's like, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry." Yeah. You're, you're adding a lot of backstory to a marriage that lasts for like two seconds. I know. Like, <laughs> well, this movie plows right ahead. Then no, it doesn't. But I mean, eventually <laughs> we do get to space. But so, before we get there, there's a stop off. We have to go to Rio, Rio. de Janeiro yeah. because yeah. he yeah. finds a I'm, shipping. Container for the vials mm-hmm. is going to Rio. That's right. And I why believe- can't it just go to the moon? <laughs> <laughs> and Shipping he- container to moon. Moon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do we find in in uh, Rio? <laughs> Creepy clowns. Oh, like a giant, giant, giant clown. Oh yeah. yeah. I forgot about this. A parade. <laughs> A clown that did everything it's, I asked it yeah, to, which really, is great. Carnival is happening. It's carnival. Yeah. That's uh, obviously that's happening because it's Rio and it has to happen in yep. a movie, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we it, don't get the shot of Christ the Redeemer in this movie. Yeah. Which, like, we get it. Built. This is we like get if you it, go down to Me- uh, Mexico. But we get it in the, the background a lot. Like, this just has yeah. to We get but, it in the background a lot. But you don't get that spinning helicopter no, shot no, of it. No, you don't yeah. get that. Which we were talking about. If Listener, if you're the person that owns the rights to the spinning helicopter <laughs> footage of Christ the Redeemer... Tell us how much money you make on a year, like yeah. using yeah. that in movies. Because wow, if I could sit on a piece of stock footage, that's the one I'd pick. Like, because how else am I supposed to know that the movie's taking place in Rio? Yeah, I mean, if you don't do that, I if don't Jesus know isn't are. welcomeing me there, yeah. then isn't how do I know what where I'm at? Do now? Couldn't they just make that stock footage into an NFT or something and yes. sell that? To you? Yeah, isn't that, yeah. Isn't that where we're going. <laughs> yes, basically. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> See, we're well, on the forefront of technology yeah. here on the Saturday Night Freak Show. That's right. So there you go. You, yeah, and you when we buy that first. NFT, it'll be the Saturday Night Freak Show Christ the Redeemer. <laughs> <laughs> Renaming it. Labels on it. Yeah. Advertising is welcome. It'll, it'll be Igor the Redeemer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is not a bad idea. Yeah, you can make that. Or, yes, I could. I could. <laughs> if, nothing, if we can't get that's this, let's just at least go get Big Butter Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so That's our backup plan. So there's, uh, in Rio, there's... Uh, right, so there's, the Carnival parade is happening, and this creepy clown follows them down an alley. And big it turns paper mache out, head clown. But yeah, it well, is, it's stuck. It's they're in it the parade. It stalks them down. And it they leave the parade, them. and I was just making a comment because the clown stops and kind of looks at them. I didn't know if it was part of the parade or not. I'm like, right. oh, the clown's watching them. Hopefully, and they go down an alley, and yeah. Bond goes into a building. I'm like, well, hopefully, they, you know, the creepy clown comes after like, them. Simultaneously, we're all like, if that clown does not follow right. them, I am out of this movie. Clown movement. needs <laughs> to come, and then he does exactly what I he want. He starts just... taking steps on the alley, and we all go, yes! Yeah. <laughs> so happy. Like, yes, finally, something is happening here. Like, if that is not Jaws under that clown head, I quit on this movie. Yes. And it was fucking Jaws under the clown yeah. head. Which, like, I want the movie that follows Jaws. 
You know, yeah. like I want to see him, well, especially going now to that Rio, he's found love, <laughs> getting in the clown costume, getting in the parade, and just looking around, hoping he runs into them. Like, like the, the, the just way the five Kismet minutes of him yeah. not being able to get his arm through a sleeve yeah. in the clown costume. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know at some point James Bond is going to want to try and break into this place, so I'm going to ingratiate myself into the parade. Well, yeah, he's in there for two years, well, also, <laughs> earning a spot in that parade. I he had to go to practice oh, for months to be and, that clown. Yeah. But no, I, but I also. <laughs> Hard see, way. I also want to see his movie because we see him just like casually like walking through the airport with his like trench coat like just yeah like a normal person and you know, and there's that moment when Drax is like can we get him well if we can get him for sure so I want to see that whole exchange of like like is he at home uh, does he get the phone call <laughs> like, what, is what does his house, house look, look like? like yeah I want to see what Jaws the house Jaws look like. movie yes. We're all about origin stories right now. Yes. The movie. Yes. Give us the Jaws movie. Yes. I mean, Disney doesn't own it. Yeah, so it won't so happen. So it won't yeah. happen. It's very that's true. That's true. We're not going to get right. a six episode TV I know, TV the broccoli is holding on to it. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's one That's the one of the properties where it's going to be in that yeah, family. They're like, they're having kids just to keep this I property think so. going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, they'll never get rid of it. Yeah. Right. Um, so well, at least also, this, in, Yeah, my... I'll say this leads us to a, a cable car scene. Yeah, the cable car yeah. scene. Yeah. Uh, next big set piece in the movie where Jaws <laughs> is able to stop the, the gears on the cable car with his bare hands. Yes. Not on the first go, though. He's got to stare it down a little bit afterwards to make <laughs> sure oh, it's not still it going. Be, oh. <laughs> and then crawls out on there. We get like a midair uh, cable car. He, he, he bites. Slides. He bites the cable yeah. with his jaws to break it. That was something I saw as a kid that stuck in my mind mm-hmm. ever since then. Yeah. I just remember That's being a like iconic scene. I just yeah. remember being like, "This is some cartoon shit." Yeah. Like yeah. in a in a adult movie, a movie yeah. made for adults. Like this yeah. is car- some cartoon shit. Absolutely. Like, yeah. It kind of felt yeah. like the bad guy from like the Superman TV show or something like that. <laughs> kind of along those lines. Yeah. Because doesn't that one end up with, uh, like, Bond and Goodhead sliding down the... No, no, uh, they're yeah. action figures <laughs> sliding down a cable. Yeah. Which the, she was cool. familiar with because she was in Yore, which also had action figures right. sliding she around. Made, she's like, yeah, I can save you a bunch of money yeah. Yeah. in wide shot. Like, oh, no, never mind. Yeah. Really? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. She mind. was the one who got eaten by the... the dog. Oh, that's right. That's right, right. So, but um, then there's a comical end to that because that's where Jaws meets his future Mrs. Jaws. Uh, oh, but pigtailed um, like whatever. But we'd like sweet to point Swiss out mocha um, girl or whatever. <laughs> we, <laughs> Swiss <laughs> Miss, <laughs> no, the Swiss Mocha girl, Swiss Mocha, Swiss Miss. There Swiss you go. Miss. Okay. We like to point out um, movies from the seventies that have scenes that possibly could have killed people. Yeah, yeah. The stunt, the stunt man in this scene was actually like dangling off of the cable car, Fuck like that. not intentionally, and everyone was like watching from the ground, thinking he was about to die. Jesus. So. And they just put that footage in the movie? Yep. In the movie. And then they do a close-up of Roger Moore reacting to it, uh, but it was actually a real dude like, hanging off the... I mean, to be fair, if you have, if you happen to capture that footage, and you, sh- you should use yeah, it. And nobody movie. died. Yeah, yeah. And nobody, yeah. you should definitely like, use it. Hey, he lived. You like, should probably use that. Yeah. yeah. Here's, a, here's a little stunt bump. A little couple of extra yeah. bucks for yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he probably right? came back. He's like, you're using that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No one was I'm not doing right. it again. Yeah. I would be like, you're using that. Yeah. Whether it fits in the movie or not. Right, right. Um, eventually in Rio, no, sorry, we have to go to the Amazon, right? Where we find, uh, the Aztec, uh, ruin, uh, well, this, is, ruin. this is still in Rio. Is it? Yeah. It's, the, it's the, the jungle Yeah, in because Rio. they okay. have the speedboat chase on the river. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. With the mines and the torpedoes. The, Jaws goes over the waterfall. Yeah. Uh, right. And then right. we end up. All right. Bond flies away. I forgot. <laughs> he, flies, <laughs> he, he hang glides. Or he hang glides away. Hang glider, yes, hang glider in his boat because yeah. his boat transforms. So, it has yeah. a hidden second, hang glider. Yeah. In it. Second boat chase. Yeah. 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 The second one. Yeah. yeah. And this one has multiple explosions, torpedoes, yeah. mines. <laughs> and you know, there's like piranhas and shit in oh. that river too. Like. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot yeah. of dummies get blown up in this scene, which is great. Oh, like, they go a flying. Lot of they go flying. Wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. And we have that. Eventually, he finds this like blonde woman yeah. beneath a uh, waterfall. It's like a fired. Playboy grotto. Yeah, it really is. It's just this one woman, and he f- she's walking, and he follows her for like a fifteen <laughs> miles. Know, or and my alarm bells are going off. She's a witch. Don't <laughs> follow her. She's a witch. Right. Definitely a witch. They know how to get Bond. They're just like, yeah, put a woman out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's put her like, something sexy. Gotta, we got him. And it's here. like it's like you don't even have to be near him. Just put a sexy woman in the woods, and he'll come. Yeah. Like he'll show up. Like boss, we he, have a waterfall. He like has a spidey sense. Yeah, yeah, but. 
he can sense like a beautiful woman is lost nearby and he'll yeah. just go towards it. <laughs> I think that's part of his uh, superpowers. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. they end up at these, because uh, every James Bond movie also has that like uh, grotto layer, whatever, the big super design, like where the villain lives. Within, right. yeah, within rocks. The sec- yeah. The secret and there's always layer a bridge that's like over a, a pond that's going to have some dead yeah, animal in it. Secret at some layer point. that's, but it's like really chic. Yeah. 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 It's got its I own, would live like, here. I would totally live here. waterfall. And yeah. this one has a giant python in it or something. I would or not live there. James Bond has to fight the giant snake. Yes. Which is, which is you don't expect when you start a movie called which, Moonraker. Which right. is spectacular. Yeah. Yep. It's delightful. Um, and then uh, and that snake's what, two weeks in a row? Yeah. Yeah. From uh, almost two weeks in a row. From or, yeah, uh, like, Conan. From Conan. Conan was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. So anyway, this uh, we end up in the launch pad. This is also like the place where Drax is going to launch all the whatever five Moonrakers to right. space, right? Mm-hmm. And right. Uh, I think at this point he gives James Bond that line where like, uh, Mister Bond, you you know, every attempt I have to plot out an amusing death for you, you know, you keep on <laughs> thwarting these things. Mm-hmm. Um, he does deliver a dry line very well. Because it's all he does. It's like, it, yeah. Bond is like, like the henchman corner Bond. Why don't they kill Bond? They end up taking Bond, like, we got you dead to rights. We're now taking take you, you with. before Drax where he can say, oh, Mr. Bond, you're still alive. <laughs> Now I'm going to put you at the, you know, in, in the... So every kind of boss is just like, why do you keep bringing him here? Just <laughs> kill him. Do I have to do everything myself. Yeah. Maybe because of these guys, because they they have to show off, and they have to show off to somebody. Right. right? Look, I caught the great James Bond. Well, he's like, look at all this shit that I'm going to do. I'm going well, to take over the world, the but I'm going to kill have... you so you can never tell anyone about it. But you I can't have to, an evil plan somebody to tell it to. Without telling it to someone. It's too good. That's why, Colin. They think it's too good. They have to share it. Yeah. Have to. But of course, Bond ends up sneaking on board the Moonraker, and that leads us to our climax that actually does take place in space. Okay, Thank so here's the thing. God, with giant... ten minutes remaining. Yep. He's got a giant uh, space base out there that has its own artificial gravity because it's spinning around, right? <laughs> and That'll come into play. He's taken all of these uh, people that he's chosen to be like his, uh, you know, that are going to repopulate the planet. <laughs> right. The cult from the end of Circle of Iron somehow made it to the moon. Yeah, because right. this is right. the yeah. girl that he follows through the waterfall is one of them, and yeah. All these girls that we've been introduced to are all part I of this. I mean, she was wearing white. He should have known. Should have known. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But this is where the movie like crosses over into that awesome territory because once they disable the cloaking device on the actual uh, space station, that mm-hmm. means that the Americans can launch their fleet of space shuttles. <laughs> Which and it, space people. And space people, because there's space soldiers in the cargo space bay. This <laughs> needs soldiers. to happen more often. <laughs> I love this. Why are we just battling ships when you can have people in little jetpacks? Like, as we know, astronauts, it's... how they get around space normally, but... Like, put a gun on that and have them flying around. This is great. Yeah. This it, should be Space Force, right? This, this is, is what yes. Space Force this should be, right? Force. Whenever they talk yes. about Space Force, this is what I see. This is yeah. it. This is it. <laughs> is we're going to have laser battles in space. Yes. Uh, Not in ships, just individual little yes. soldiers flying how you, around. How do you build a around? trench yeah. in space? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, where's how is there a no man's land? The no man's land, yeah. Yeah, how do you do a no man's land in space? Is it just space junk we're collecting I mean, piling it up? The next step is- this is the movie we should make. The next step is- the battle has to happen in a minefield, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Well, see, that's the thing. Though. Or a meteor field, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Meteor field. But to. even this, like, when I was watching it, I, you know, again, these Bond movies, like, blend together. And mm-hmm. I'm like, in Thunderball, at the end of that, they had the underwater battle between the two, uh, like, platoons. They were shooting mm-hmm. harpoons at each other, you know, because you had the guys in red and the guys in blue. Right. And we, you know, and this has got the guys in yellow and the guys in white, you know, <laughs> like, shooting mm-hmm. at each other in space. With like pew pew pew, pew yep. lasers, but they didn't have different nuts. colors. Yeah. <laughs> they should have different yeah. colors. They should have, so we could know who was hitting. Who. Right, we needed yeah. a good laser and a bad laser. Right, that's how this right. works. Yeah, they were just blue. Yeah, yeah. they're all blue. This all right. is where I'm thinking. I can't I think remember, but I don't. Other color. I don't think James Bond actually pressed the button marked self destruct, but he may as well have. Uh, the right, <laughs> thing like starts self destructing. Jaws and the, his little lady do survive. I think. Uh, they're well, out. James Bond says, don't worry, they're a hundred miles away from Earth. They'll be just fine. Look at that. He says eventually. that, like, as their craft is, like, breaking they're apart barreling in space. towards the darkness of space. Yeah, yeah, they're floating away from Earth. Yeah. yeah. Well, they switched. That's right, because uh, 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 Jaws helps out James Bond here at the end. Yes. Because yeah. he realizes. He's, he switches teams. He realizes he's yeah. not perfect. 
And he will never be allowed to just be himself on this new perfect world that Drax yeah. is creating. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. like, so you're going to destroy anyone who's not perfect. As yes, Bond and, plays and it And he's like, well, yeah. obviously. And he just kind of looks at Jaws hey, like, hey, ugly. ugly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> ugly. Talking, you. talking about you. Yep. Draw ugly ass down there and get us out of this. <laughs> Um, and then the, I guess the last thing, once uh, we knock uh, Drax off into space, then uh, we yeah, got to track that, Oh, that's ass. when he uses his little wrist art. We haven't talked about the wrist art. Oh, yeah. He gets a brand new like watch thing that if he just flexes his wrist a certain way, it shoots darts at Because people. the movie forgets about it for like an hour. Sh- like, well, let's see him check off wrist dart gun. Yeah, that, Obviously. Of yeah but there was times like he could have used it and didn't. I like, know, because like, they really want you to forget about it. Like when, his, like when he was literally had rope, had him tied to the, the bed in the back of the ambulance perfect opportunity to use your fucking wrist dart and he doesn't like it I mean, it no, wasn't loaded but he's bond he, he, he used, used it on it's something. funnier if he just uses it for shit like like blasting women's clothes off yeah. like yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, he would yeah. use it for yeah, yeah, the yeah. immature bond like <laughs> watch that <laughs> um, yeah the end of the movie is uh, he has to they well they're in the space shuttle and they actually actually have to track down the three mines yes. that are like orbiting yeah, the earth the, and the nerve blast gas them. that's gonna destroy all mankind yeah, yeah. they gotta destroy them in space while as everything slowly uh, decelerates into Earth's atmosphere. They're skipping right. across, Colin. Yeah. Right. I kind of like the way that they, they built it, because you got three of them, you're like, do I have to watch this same sequence three times? But they're right. like, pew, we shot the first one, no problem. And then the second one, it's like, oh, we're skipping over the atmosphere, and things are getting, but pew, we got that one. Mm-hmm. And now the third one, of course, all the gizmos I've go to... i got manual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not bad. Not, not bad. bad. Not bad. It, it was better than I thought it was going to be because right. I was thinking the same thing. Like, oh, three of these things? Like, yeah. 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 Okay. And they built the tension. They did. They yeah, did. they did. They made it through. And because James Bond is a sociopath, he'll be the only man to go to space and come back and not have space madness. He'll be fine. He'll right. have yeah. no mental yeah. illness from going to space. He'll be, no, he'll be fine because he survived the G-Force experiment where we are told at what? Seven, normal you people pass do out. Three. Yeah, normal people pass out at seven, but 12 is fatal. And I think Bond makes it he to like it. nine yeah. <laughs> without passing mm-hmm. out. Yeah. <laughs> He's, Bond. He's James Bond. Yeah. Um, how old is Roger Moore in this movie? Like, how the actor, how old would he be playing this character right now? See, it feels like he was like in his 50s, but it's like could um, be. He older be in his 40s. I think he was 45. Okay. I know okay. in A View to a Kill. Uh, what made him quit being James Bond was that when he was filming that movie, he met the bot main Bond girl's mom because she was on set that day same and realized age. he was the same age as her mom. And that's when he said, oh, I need to quit being Bond. And wow. Tony Roberts. What, is, a, uh, what, a yeah. level, what a what a presence of uh, self-awareness about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, right? I can't be doing yeah. this anymore. Yeah. Well, he had a pretty good run at it. As he took that girl and left. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, well, my parting gift will be this Bond girl. Well, even though this was critically reviled and considered, I think, like I said, at the time, the worst of the James Bond movies, how well did it do at the box office? Um, well, the budget for this movie was $34 million. Holy like shit. In, but yeah. that's 1979. Seven, that's 1979. Okay, so. And it grossed over $210 million. Wow. Yeah. Okay, it so is, it's still a major it, hit. It made more money than the first eight Bond movies. Oh, wow. Well, well, now I wonder, how did the next one do? Because that's that how you know. judge it. That I don't know. Yeah, because everybody After, goes yeah, like, the success right, yeah, of this <laughs> one, yeah. nobody likes this one. Something like, like that, that. Like, tells you something like space uh, space movies oh, yeah. were yeah. such a huge deal the actual, they like, made the right decision. Yeah, the actual space station set was at the time the biggest set ever created, and it took like eight months to build. Wow. So, yeah, it was, was, it, was big, one, it was a big piece. Was it Spy Who Loved Me? Like, there was something, uh, the cinematographer on that one had worked with, like, Stanley Kubrick. There's a story that, like, like he, the guy was having trouble lighting this massive, huge fucking set that goes back, like, forever. And it's like, you know, a launch pad or something. And he, on the weekend, he brought Stanley Kubrick over because they were filming at Pinewood. And Stanley Kubrick actually, like, gave him ideas how to light the set for the James Bond movie. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you usually don't hear nice things about Kubrick. Right? Like that, so that's like, nice. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Then uh, he uh, tries for re-entry and uh, move more. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Yeah. Yeah. But um. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the sound it made. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess well, it's Moonraker. Moonraker. Okay. Moonraker. So, uh, Moonraker. we're going to... 
<laughs> Sean keeps singing Moonraker in the tune of Moon River. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because that's not what the Moonraker song sounds no, like. It's no, not, no, not at all. I'm singing she my own version. She does say Moonraker at least once in that, but that's another not one. Enough, the the though, chorus huh? isn't the. Yeah, it's isn't just not yeah. as punchy. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so we're going to tell you what we thought of this movie individually and uh, whether or not you should watch it. Uh, but first of all, we're going to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Do you think he's ever been to space? I think he's from space. He's, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he might be. <laughs> Um, well, I guess we should let people know how they can join in on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And we're on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, about Moonraker, Stuart O'Kell says, uh, I think he's attempting re-entering, sir, is one of the greatest <laughs> lines in Bond history. It, it does it, work out very yeah. well. It's deserving. Yeah, it is that deserving. deserves to be yeah. in a Bond. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was good. It's much better than Christmas only comes once a year, I think. Yeah. I, see, but I would say that's the second one. I mean, <laughs> maybe not the greatest. That it, I remember that yeah, one. That yeah, was like, yeah. you built a whole movie. Based on that. <laughs> Joke, around yeah. that joke. Um, Crossbow Studio says it's got one of the best opening scenes in the series. It's it's, it's solid. memorable. It's solid. Yeah, it's memorable. I don't remember what it was. The, the, the plane, the parachute, the, jaws uh, falling yes. onto well, the falling circus tent. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Simon Carter says the opening scene is a really cool piece of cinema, and I remember being creeped out by the death by dog scene. Yeah. The rest of it's kind of forgettable, and the less said about the pigeon double take, the better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep getting reminded about that yeah. <laughs> yeah, it stands out like what yeah. the hell were you thinking uh adam kaler says if they waited a few more years they could have had james bond in space in 3d which would have been perfect for the most dynamic space battle in cinematic uh, history i if we, would like to see that actually yeah we ever get a 3d bond movie no, no. but i mean because in 83 it was uh all right uh for your eyes only i think or, or no octopus for your eyes only octopus Red, was that come one. On. yeah it cries <laughs> for 3d, skip the 3D now three in 3d <laughs> for your eyes only come on. <laughs> uh michael whitaker says i know it only by reputation i'm surprised we continue to take james bond seriously after it <laughs> although a lot of people seem to like it so maybe the wrong people got to me first probably probably it depends on how you go into it yeah and it depends on what you like like some people take bond really seriously you know yeah like, that's so it what depends i mean on like, your bond opinion if you go into it yeah. like wanting a serious bond movie yeah you're gonna mm -hmm. fucking hate it yeah, because mm -hmm. tonally, I guess they're so you know different over the over the coast. Well, not they're not that drastically different, but the, I guess the amount of comedy that they play, right? Well, or the ridiculousness. Like, you go on long enough, it's like the Halloween series. It's a choose your own flavor at that point. What do you right. what, what taste do you like? Well, we have it for you. It's here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jacob Laws says this is one of the worst Roger Moore Bond films. It was for the most part very boring outside of the opening scene. Hugo Drax does have one of the best Bond villain quotes, though. Mr. Bond, you defy all my attempts to plan an amusing death for you. <laughs> uh, DJ Malka says uh, not the best Bond film, but I don't think it deserves the amount of hate it receives. It has so many fun, memorable moments. I'd gladly watch this any day over the Pierce Brosnan Bond films. I love the Shirley Bassey tune during the opening, <laughs> too. Cheers. 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 And DJ Dogman Fish <laughs> says, I kind of wish you had picked the James Bond, pick James Bond fights Christopher Walken, horse and blimp enthusiast, as the Bond movie to watch. That would be A View to a Kill. <laughs> See, I mean, I feel like I need to watch more Bond. A View to a Kill is definitely freak show worthy. So. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was choosing between the two of them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, about, uh, let's see, last week's movie was Species. Neil Gums writes in and says it's a fantastic movie, a little over ambitious with the CGI at the end. Though. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little yeah. bit. I think yeah. that's how we came down on it. Yep. Right? That's, um, yeah. Uh, two weeks ago, we watched Conan the Barbarian. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. we discovered, uh, the week that we're recording this that, um, William Smith, the actor who played uh, Conan's yes. father, passed away. Uh, Mauricio Delgado said, uh, William Smith. He says is also the notorious Falconetti in Rich Man Poor Man. 
Huh. Uh, Rich okay. Man, Poor Man, I think it was like the first mini series maybe ever made for like ABC. It was like a nine part, mm-hmm. you know, uh, back in the late 70s. Uh, Appiel says, I thought uh, William Smith was very effective and intimidating as the Russian general in Red Dawn. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one scene from Conan that has stayed with me through all the years is his mom's demise. Yeah, tragically it's rough. Yeah. yeah, it's a brutal scene. It is. It's beautiful. It's well done. It's, it's really well done. Um, Raft Production says at the time, I don't know, he says, all my, my all-time favorite film for my birthday, my girlfriend sat down and watched it for me. And after she said, I didn't know this was an unintentional comedy. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, I can understand how watching like Arnold stuff in retrospect is unintentionally hilarious. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. because Arnold has become such like a parody of himself and like mm-hmm. the soundboard and just like noises he makes are just like jokes Ridiculous. now. Yeah. So like, yeah. I can understand like how he just kind of is a walking punchline right, right. now. So Especially I that why. movie. He, yeah. He, he doesn't talk for 20 minutes. It's just noises. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Ow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There were a couple of those in there because he fell down. <laughs> Um, we took a couple of knocks at Cull the Conqueror uh, in that movie because uh, it's another Robert E. Howard mm-hmm. character. Grant Parrish said Cull wasn't bad, but definitely could have benefited from an alternate to Kevin Sorbo. Tia Carrera looks fantastic as a redhead, though. Uh, he's also saying the Wheel of Pain in uh, Conan the Barbarian, because we were having a discussion right. of what it was for. Mm-hmm. He says the Wheel of Pain is meant to build the slaves so they make more money when they're sold to the gladiator arena. Uh, All right, I can go with I'll that. Go with that. I, I can still go like with that. The, we're making bread. <laughs> we're just grinding up wheat. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kryptonian Orphan says the representation of Conan sitting on his throne at the end is just so badass, it makes Cull the Conqueror look like Cull the Crybaby. He does look <laughs> like kind of a badass there with his beard and everything. Like, yeah. Badass. Uh, let's see here. Robbie or Bobby D says uh, we were talking about the influence of H.P. Lovecraft on the uh, the Conan stories from mm-hmm. Robert E. Howard. Yes. Bobby D says uh, Lovecraft also makes reference to Howard's creations in his own mythos stories, including the Serpent People. So we're That's saying cool. they they influenced each right. other. You know, yeah. Uh, Stratos Salamanis okay. says Sandal Bergman as Valeria is a stunner. Yeah, she's Agreed. great. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Uh, we were given a lot of credit during that episode to Ron Cobb, the production designer. Travis Legler says, speaking of Ron Cobb, he also received credit as DeLorean time travel consultant Ooh. for the Back to the Future movie. Nice. Uh, his what drawing- a title. Yeah, that's yeah. a great title. <laughs> that's awesome. DeLorean time travel consultant. Hey. Wow. He says his drawings helped lead to the final design. Nice. nice. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, Holly will be interested. Well, if I in... thought a DeLorean traveled through time, it'd be like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Is that all it took to get this job on this movie? <laughs> all right. So, Holly. Yes. Oh. You had asked a question on the Conan the Barbarian episode, okay, which was to do with the fact that uh, Thulsa Doom turns a snake into an arrow and shoots it into somebody, and you're like, "Didn't somebody else turn yeah. a snake into?" Yeah, and a I, I thought that it was it was um, GI uh, Joe the movie, the 1987 GI Joe movie. Well, it turns out you're correct. Richard Kratzer <laughs> says you guys are correct. The GI Joe, the animated movie, the head of Cobra Serpentor uses snakes as spears. As crazy as that sounds, he hits Duke in the chest and he goes into a coma. <laughs> Andrew Bradford says this probably has already been answered, but the snake that turns into a weapon was a G.I. Joe. Serpentor grabs one of the snakes around his headdress, straightens it out, mm-hmm. throws it at Lieutenant Falcon, only to have Sergeant Duke take the hit. Yes. This happened in a <laughs> This is a whole a thing, movie. This a whole in a movie. universe I don't know about. Yeah, but yeah, I appreciate it. This is also something I'm just <laughs> no, like, yeah. when, when yeah, we're done recording, when we're done recording, I'm playing the opening song for you because it oh, is yeah. amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I haven't prob- heard it in a while. Uh, I will say, I, Joe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, and you're American <laughs> hero. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm probably familiar with that because of the E bombs world clips where they took that and then recorded new voiceovers over them oh, to make them into yeah. funny videos. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's um, how I probably know it. Well, final Early word internet. on uh, Conan was Mike Welch wrote in to tell us that the sword that Conan's dad made says on it, suffer no guilt. He who wields this in the name of Crom. Ooh, of course, it's written Crom. in like, hmm. uh, unless you're Atlantean like, the hell or something. You. yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> then, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you all for writing in. Uh, now we're going to go around the Colin. table. <laughs> wow. Right to it. Right to, right it. to it. Not fucking around. <laughs> Colin, what did you think? The movie we watched tonight, 
What did we watch tonight? Moonraker. Moonraker. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight's movie, Moonraker. That classic. What did you think of that film? Um, Moonraker that we watched tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, cool. it's. I think watching it in, you know, usually I, I watch I watch the James Bond movies every so so many years. You know, um, have you seen them all? Yeah, okay. there because I think when I got the box, it was a fiftieth anniversary. I imagine I went you just started watch the them all. It took a while, through. but yeah, I watched <laughs> them all, and that's why I don't recommend that you do that because they blur. <laughs> but um, watching it in a room with you guys was uh, a different perspective because to me, Austin Powers is a blip on the, like James Bond. <laughs> Rather than for, it being your whole world, yeah. like it is for us, right? Yeah, it's like there was there was James Bond, and then there's this Austin and Powers thing. We can't thing. flip we that switch opposite. off. We yeah. can't no, turn it off. No, we will always like... be Austin Powers, and then oh yeah, James Bond yeah, also and, exists. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you guys have got it. Where like Austin Powers has ruined retroactively. Yes, ruined yeah. it has you being able to take James Bond movies seriously. Yes, this movie doesn't help that case. Obviously, this is Thank uh, God. probably the 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 peak because I would say it's a. Uh, uh, Die Another Day was maybe my other least favorite James Bond movie. So, like, in out of them all, because there's stronger ones and weaker ones, but those two have always stood out. Die as Another like, Day was Brosnan, wasn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. that had the Madonna yeah, song. Was, yeah, and it ended yeah. at the, the <laughs> like, whatever, the palace that was made of snow in the middle of, there was, like, know, camouflage I, car I and all that. I like that one. <laughs> I like that one a lot. <laughs> so, um... Uh, the guy with the diamonds in his face. Uh, I like that. Oh, yeah. Um, right. So, but that's that's looking at the series as a whole, right? And you identify yes. like the good ones and the bad ones. But if you're just watching the movie by itself, and if the question is, would you recommend it? Then you're kind of grading it under a different level. Is it entertaining? Yes, it is. It's very entertaining. Yes, it's silly. Uh, but uh, it still has those sequences that you know james bond movies are known for um i'm saying as a as an individual movie you're recommending it as, as a fr on the freak show yeah, yeah freak show standards yeah yeah, because you know a lot of the things obviously it's like there's a lot of echoes of stuff that they've done in the right. past you do kind of get the feeling that like okay we're you know just kind of trying to keep this thing afloat mm -hmm. with like and coming up with these uh these outlandish ideas but mm -hmm. uh I mean, I was entertained. I've always been entertained by Moonraker. I think I saw this one actually in a theater at a retrospective. It was flashback weekend. Nice. I think the first I walked in and they had Moonraker going in a movie theater and it was like, oh, wow. So, you know, they had identified it as like a, 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 like a freak showy kind of uh, mm -hmm. James Bond movie. And then uh, I saw the Black Widow movie this week and moonraker shows up in it that's, uh, that, that's insane yeah I i'm like what that. are the odds that's funny. <laughs> so um yeah i mean i i would i would recommend it it's entertaining um you're asking uh so that's a recommendation from moonraker from mm -hmm. me favorite james bond i think is always going to be well i don't know it's tough it was always um sean connery mm -hmm. but the daniel craig movies mm -hmm. uh because they're so different and they all have like a, a common narrative thread yeah is mm -hmm. like something different than the other like individual standalone yeah it's almost like you gotta be like i will take the daniel craig ones because they are like you said of one there's yeah. just right. one we're witnessing a person become this you know, and like how his right. history shapes him into being. Yes. So, the, you know, we're also really close to it. Like yeah. we don't have yeah. distance yeah. from yeah. it yet to look back and compare it. So, yeah. Yeah. Hard, but are you know. are you, are you looking at favor. are you looking at the arc of Bond or are you looking at just if actor? You're looking at, uh, well, I guess, uh, uh, yeah. Well, Connery, then I prefer I, I prefer Connery. I think, mm -hmm. but I prefer the Craig arc. Mm -hmm. And I would say my favorite Bond movies are probably. Skyfall, Goldeneye, Goldfinger. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, well, you left out Roger Moore completely. I think it's Spy Who Loved Me is probably the best one from of his. So mm -hmm. there you go. I know. That mm -hmm. wasn't really a direct answer to your question. <laughs> it's it's a it's a nebulous thing that can change over time. It's not <laughs> yes, written in stone, yeah. Colin. All right. So, so Michaela, what'd you think of Moonraker? That's right. I remembered the title. Yeah. Moonraker. Yeah. Uh, this was the first Bond movie I ever saw because my dad was like, this is appropriate for children because it's <laughs> fucking ridiculous. And so, I mean, I have a lot of nostalgic childhood attachment to that. But that being said, I don't always remember that it's Moonraker was the first one I saw because like 
when you say James Bond goes to space, you think the movie's going to be about space, not about Rio and Venice and all yeah, this other stuff. Man, yeah, man. It really got me on uh, that one. <laughs> but as soon as that cold open started, I was like, oh, shit, this is the one I saw as a kid a lot. So, I mean, I have a lot of a nostalgic attachment to it. Is it a good movie? I don't know. Like, it kind of, like, it's hard for me to say what isn't isn't a good movie because right now I feel like I don't like any movie that comes out. So, like, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah. You know? It's like, I hate everything right yeah, now. Yeah, like, I don't like anything I watch right now. So, like, I enjoyed this. It's stupid. It was fun. It's expensive. It has good stunts. What's not to love, you know? Um, if you would have asked me in high school who my favorite Bond was, I would have said Roger Moore for sure. And I think that's just because that's what I watched the most as a kid. But... I have a ton of nostalgic attachment to the Pierce Brosnan movies because they were the new ones that came yes. out when I was a kid. I love Goldeneye a ton. I think that movie's underrated. People need to revisit it. I think it's it, one of the best I, ones. It is. Yeah. It has a female villain, too. Like, it's one of the only ones that does. Like, check it out. Sean Bean's in it. Famke Jensen's in it. Like, you'll forget who's in Goldeneye. I Go watch it. I that game. Yeah, the, it's a great yeah. game. It's a great game, too. Um, but I, I, Kyle and I actually do like the other Pierce Brosnan <laughs> ones, too, though. I like... Uh, wait, the one I don't like is Tomorrow Never Dies. That's the one I don't like. That I, one with Halle Berry? No. No. Uh, I like The World Is Not Enough, and I like Die Another Day. Okay. But Tomorrow Never Dies is the one I... Their, their titles are so generic, I forget which ones are which sometimes. Right. It's always just never, not, always, sometimes. Like, that's always the James Bond right. title. Like, you like, could just yell something randomly. You will not die! Yeah, that's and the next Bond movie. <laughs> what's that new one? No Time, no time to, die? to Die? Yeah, yeah like, yeah. that's that sounds like it could have come out in the 60s or in the 90s. I don't fucking know. Right. But, you know... Um, I think you got to watch it. I think that, like, you know, Holly, I thought for sure you were going to bring A View to a Kill because I totally forgot that Moonraker was the space one. So, but A View to a Kill is definitely still on the board for freak show mm -hmm. viewing, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um I think you got to watch it just because it's a lot of movie crammed into two hours. It does sag at points. It does drag its feet a little bit. Does it need to be this long? Probably not. But still, a lot does happen in that two hours. Yes. I mean, you're jet setting, you're, you know, wrestling pythons, you're... <laughs> Not going to the cable moon. Cars. You're, <laughs> you're literally avoiding going to the moon. You're doing everything but going to the moon. So Moonraker. I. Ev it should be. It should yeah. be called eventually Moonraker. Eventually Moonraker. I. Yeah. I think Pierce Brosnan is probably the one I have the most childhoodness attachment to. But I think Daniel Craig is the best one I've seen. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do like Roger Moore a lot. But it drops off real quick with him. Like his are really good. And then like, yeah, if you think this is eh, a view to a kill, it's like, he's really past his prime in that mm -hmm. one. I think so. It's a little sad to watch at times. So I would definitely recommend movie maker because it's just ridiculous. And there's a lot, there's a lot of different things. Like we said, it's like a highlight reel. So watch it. Sean, what'd you think? On that fucking horse. <laughs> oh my God. Um, Moonraker. I'm glad I finally got to see it after, uh, knowing, it, uh, having heard of it so long. Um, I'm not, uh, I haven't watched a lot of Bond movies. I will tell you that every time I watch one, I wouldn't mind watching another one. Like, this makes me want to explore it just to know that this is kind of like the, this is one of the weird ones of the series. So I'd like to see what is not weird. Um, I mean, um, I mean, it's good. It's fun. It's hilarious. It's bad. I mean, there's action figures in this movie. Again, I can't say no to a movie like that. Um... Man, if we'd only gotten to the moon sooner. Um, I'm gonna... <laughs> I, I'll recommend it, because I had a really great time tonight. But this this is, like... Um, I still don't think I have a good grasp on what, like, the James Bond series, especially because I... You know, of this. Of the old ones, I, this might be the oldest one I've seen. Like, I have not oh, seen wow. a lot of... Yeah, I have not oh. seen a you lot of You should watch the Connery ones. You'd yeah. probably like those. I would probably would. I've mm -hmm. seen, again, like, maybe bits and pieces. But no, I have never sat down and, like gotten into Bond. I would but, recommend, yeah, I mean, that's like a good, it's just like a summer project or winter sure, project. Sure, and I would, and but yeah. I would never want to do, like Colin, like, you see me, I'm just going through them, never, no. I would but, get sick of them. Yeah, yeah. no. But they yeah. do, the the thing that I will give you, you know, that you remember them being kind of standalones, mm -hmm. but if you watch them in order, there is like, there's these little narrative thread progressions yeah. that do, uh, you know, Maybe look up a list them. of like the ten best ones and start there. You know, something. Like, yeah, I wouldn't goes, mind you know? exploring more of Bond. Uh, that being said, I mean this was great. This was fun, ridiculous. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> had a good time. I recommend it. Obviously, uh, Holly. 
Do you have a favorite Bond oh, movie? Oh, uh, favorite Bond and, movie. And a favorite Bond? I also grew up with the Pierce Brosnan Bonds. I saw a couple of those in theaters, yeah. so mm-hmm. that was a big thing. But, I mean, it's... And uh, they, they feel so 90s. That's what I love really about them. Do. They feel of their time. Yeah. <laughs> they really do. And they, and feel, they feel, for some reason to me, like they, they feel like the most American yes. Bond movies. Very video Bond. gamey. Yeah, yeah. It's strange. Well, that's I what I was just going to say. Yeah. Like or... My big memory is the blocky video games. Yeah. And, playing. Yeah, yeah the Gold shoot Night and then Nightfire, which was never a movie, but was a game. Game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which was like it was like an amalgamation of a bunch of. Do you remember that one where they brought Sean Connery back, like, <laughs> yeah, to do the voice? Th- was it uh, from Russia with Love or something? The video game, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And he was like seventy or something. He did the voice. He played Bond again for yep. a video right. game. Yeah. There's yeah. that non non canon Bond movie that he was in too, uh, Never Say Never Again, mm-hmm. that came out I think the same year as Octopussy. They had two Bonds See, in such the theater. A, there's there you such go. a weird one. That's my Marvel year. Yeah. Yeah. That, that really makes me want to like look into this and like. But I know because of that, I know if I like dive into this, like I'm gonna get caught up in all that stuff. So I'm just like, all right, I can't. Not gonna do it. Maybe one day we'll get there. You don't want to get obsessive. About I, I don't. It. Yeah. Like I got enough other stuff to like try and figure out. You know, I have enough to obsess over. Here. Right. <laughs> I can't be doing it with this, but I do like them. So yeah, um, I definitely recommend it. I will watch yeah. more. This was a very fun movie tonight. I, I, I kind of thought you were going to be like the contrarian and be like, my favorite's Timothy Dalton. No, <laughs> no one's favorite is Timothy Dalton. <laughs> I do like Dalton, but he's not my sure. Favorite. No, I like Dalton, just I don't want him as Bond. Yeah. Right. And it's too bad George Lazenby was cast like yeah. in one of the better Bond movies. Right. Like, <sighs> he's only, he's fine, but he's he's not, a sleepy he's not. old man. He is yeah. sleepy. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. There it is. Uh, yeah. Daniel Craig is my Bond. Okay. Just maybe because of recency, but he's yeah, the one I've yeah, seen and sure. experienced the most. Yeah. So obviously, I had to bring Wind Waker to the Freak Show. <laughs> I mean, let's I be real. It's got. It's got everything we like at the freak show. It's just ridiculousness. There's explosions. There's chase scenes. There's wrestling a python. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, eventually, they go to space. And it's just absolutely ridiculous. And Jaws falls in love. I mean, (laughs) fucking hell. This movie's ridiculous. But it's so much fun. Like, to me, I, I know we watched it, like, as a Bond movie. And it's our first Bond movie on the show. But this isn't even, like, really a Bond movie to me. Like, it's just so bizarre. But it's but that's so what much. Makes it funny. Yeah, when that's you why take it's everything so fun. From, like this is pure Bond. This is a real Bond. It's movie. a real like, Bond movie. Stuff, I know. But then it's that, and that's it's funny. just so fun. So yeah, I love the hell out of it. It's, I think I think it's so much fun. Um, it's entertaining as hell. I, I do agree that it doesn't need to be two hours um, because it does drag a little bit. But they do cram so much in there. And, yeah, I was never yeah. like. Looking at my watch, going. I was never bored, even yeah. though it would drug a little bit. I wasn't bored. Like, no, no, no. Was, there's so good. much Especially happening. Especially when they start doing the slow mo walking. Oh to, my god! Slow mo anti gravity walk. Anti gravity walk. Oh god! What is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they point five minutes Super later. slow. Pointing. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's so great. So it's so stupid. Yeah, this is a fun one. If you're gonna watch like a serious Bond movie, stay far away from this one. But for just a fun experience, I definitely recommend it. Um, yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, yeah, just go watch. If you haven't seen it, go watch the trailer. You will want to watch this movie. Trust me. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I agree with you guys. I grew up watching. I mean, obviously I watched Sean Connery. I watched Roger Moore. I've seen like all of them. Pierce Brosnan was the nineties and that was like the heart of my childhood. Um, but then obviously we've had Daniel Craig do such an amazing job. Skyfall is my favorite Bond mm-hmm. movie. Um, Goldeneye, spectacular. That's a close, close second. Um, uh, I think. I think when like thinking about Bond, I always instantly think Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, just I like, picture mm-hmm. him. I, but I think Daniel Craig's probably my favorite of the mm-hmm. of them. So yeah, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Craig. Mm-hmm. So, All right, there you go. Well, that means uh, Moonraker is free show. <laughs> show. That means you have to watch it. It's the bylaw, right? If it's yeah, where's my stamp? Yeah. <laughs> you got to watch it. All right. So next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Michaela. What are we going to watch next week? Are we still in our bombs, our yeah. box office bombs? We are rolling out to the last stop Ooh. on our blockbuster bomb summer. Okay. It's been 10 years, guys. Oh, no. We got to oh, revisit. Wait, what year is it? Cowboys and Aliens. Yes! <laughs> yes! All right, never it's seen been, it. It's been a decade. I have never seen it. I can't. I saw this movie in theaters. I can't believe that was 10 years ago. Speaking like, of Daniel Craig. Yeah, 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 Craig. Craig. Yeah. Speaking of Daniel Craig. We're, we're, we're going to yeah. talk about our love for the Favs next week. John Favreau directed yes. Cowboys and Aliens. Yes! Oh. God, I love him. Mm-hmm. 
All right, so that's next week. Cowboys and aliens on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. I'm glad I waited 10 years. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha.